Welcome back, bookworms. This is Mrs. K. I'm glad you could join me. Chinese New Year, or the Spring Festival, lasts 15 days and focuses on sharing. Did you know that a traditional wok is a symbol of sharing because they're big enough to cook a meal for many families? Well, in today's story, The Runaway Wok, written by Ying Chang Kompenstein and illustrated by Sebastia Serra, a traditional magical wok helps the Zhang family and their village celebrate Chinese New Year and teaches us all a lesson about sharing. Love the parade and the lanterns. One Chinese New Year's Eve, a poor couple sent their son Ming to the market. Trade these last few eggs for a bag of rice, said Mapa Zhang. Then we can make some stir-fried rice to share with the neighbors. It won't be much of a celebration again this year, Papa Zhang said with a sigh. You'd think that by working for Mr. Li, the richest man in Beijing, we would have enough to invite everyone over for the New Year's feast. Ming hurried off, eager to do his mother's bidding. It saddened him to see his hard-working parents being cheated by the greedy Mr. Lee. As he walked, he daydreamed about what a real feast would be like and how nice it would be to have just one new toy to share with his friends. A small old man stopped Ming near the market. Hello, son. I see you have some eggs there. I will trade you this wok for them. No, said Ming. I need rice. Besides, your wok is rusted and has no handle. And just then, the wok sang out, Boy, boy, trade for me. I am more than what you see. Ming had never heard a wok sing, and he thought, this walk is magical. If it can sing, it must be able to do other amazing things. So he made the trade. The old man sauntered off, chuckling happily to himself. Ming's mother wasn't happy. Why did you trade for this battered old walk? What are we going to cook in it? Before Ming could answer, the walk sang out, Mother, make me shine so bright, and you shall have food to share tonight. See, Mama, said Ming, it's a special walk. Let's do what it says, said Papa Zhang. We're all hungry. So Mama Zhang washed and polished the walk until it sparkled, and then she set it on the table. To their surprise, it rolled off the table and out the door. Where are you going? cried Mama Zhang. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's wife I go, sang the walk, and it briskly hopped down the road. Look at that. The walk skipped all the way to the Lee kitchen. Mrs. Lee was overseeing the servants prepare the New Year's feast for her family. The Lees never shared their food with anyone. The walk plopped down on the counter. Where did this come from? asked Mrs. Lee. No one knew. Well, put it to good use, she ordered. It will make a nice serving bowl. So the servants put in the wok festive stirred fried rice, pork dumplings, kung pao chicken, steamed buns, and walnut shrimp. There was still room for more. They added long life noodles, ginger fish, and rice cakes. Yet still there was room for more. Keep filling it, commanded Mrs. Lee. I must go change for the party. Oh my. No sooner had the servant set the last bit of food in the walk than it jumped out of the window. Skippity hoppity ho, to the poor man's house I go, sang the walk as it trotted down the road, brimming with delicious food. The Zhang family could hardly believe their eyes. 
They gleefully removed the food and set up a big feast. As soon as it was empty, the walk rolled out of their courtyard. Where are you going? cried Ming. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's son I go, sang the walk as it galloped away. The walk caught up with the rich man's son, Lan, at the market, who, though he had many toys, he never shared them with other children. The walk blocked the road in front of him. What's this? wondered Lan. I could use it to hold all my goodies. And without bothering to find the owner, the chubby boy grabbed the walk. Lan bought fireworks, toy dragons, cymbals, and drums. He piled them into the walk, and there was still room for more. So he bought lanterns, yo-yos, and kites. Finally, his weak arms grew tired, and he headed home. Oh my, look at all of that. When Lon arrived home, he put down the walk and went to find his mother. No sooner had he turned his back than the walk hopped away. Skippity hoppity ho, to the poor man's house I go. It pranced all the way back to the Zhang's house with all the goodies safe inside. Ming bounced with joy as he emptied the walk. There are enough toys here for all of my friends, he exclaimed. The walk rolled over to the door and out of their courtyard once again. Where are you going? cried Mr. Zhang. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's house I go, sang the walk as it spun down the road. The walk arrived at Mr. Lee's shop just as he was counting the money he had cheated out of the poor people of Beijing. It leaped through the window and landed on the counter in front of him. Well, here's a nice pot to hold my money. Mr. Lee put the handful after handful of gold coins into the walk, and there was still room for more. He dragged out a bag from under his counter and dumped all those coins in to it too. Oh my. No sooner had Mr. Lee emptied the last of his coins into the walk than it jumped out the window. Skippity hoppity ho, to the poor man's house I go. It scooted down the road all the way back to the Zhang's house with all the money safe inside. Ming and his parents danced with delight. They invited all the poor people in Beijing to their New Year's feast. Mother Zhang served the food. Father Zhang divided the coins up among the families, and Ming handed out the toys to all the children. Oh, that's so nice. In the middle of the party, without anyone noticing, the walk slid out the door. Skippity hoppity ho, to the rich man's house I go. It hopped to the Lee's house where the father and mother and their spoiled son were weeping and wailing and blaming each other for their misfortune. When they saw the walk, they jumped up. There's the walk that took all our food, cried Mrs. Lee. And my toys, whined the boy. I'll break it for stealing our gold, vowed Mr. Lee. And the walk sang out, I dare you three to try and catch me. Oh my. The Lee family chased after the walk. Chubby Lan couldn't make it very far without losing his breath. And Mrs. Lee had trouble running in her fancy shoes. But Mr. Lee finally caught up with it. To stop the walk, he jumped inside, pressing it to the ground. Now I've got you, he growled. Wait for me, said Mrs. Lee. I will teach that walk a lesson. Mr. Lee tried to get up but found that he was stuck tight and when Mrs. Lee grabbed his legs to pull him out, she slipped into the walk too. Chubby Lan finally arrived out of breath. Help, help, pull us out, cried his parents. Lan grabbed their legs but lost his balance and fell inside with them. <laughs> That's funny. Skippity hoppity ho, too far away I will go sang the walk as it tumbled down the road with the Lee family inside, legs waving in the air. Dragon dancers' drums boomed, cymbals crashed, and firecrackers banged, drowning out the Lee family's cries. No one noticed as the walk sped off to the distant hills. The Lee family 
was never seen again in Beijing. As for the Zhang family, they opened a shop selling woks of all different sizes and styles. And every year, they hosted a glorious New Year's feast for all their friends and family. And to think that it all started with a rusted wok with no handle. Well, bookworms, I hope you enjoyed this story. We learned a little about Chinese New Year traditions and how important it is to share. Now when you get a chance, go to your local library and check out other books about holiday traditions. Or if you like this book, go to a bookstore and buy a copy for yourself. Thanks for reading with me. Until next time.